Praise be Jesus Christ, and thank you for joining me for Link to Liturgy's online school. Today we will go, be going through the course number one, which is uh, the question, Can We Have Man Without God? In this whole course, we're really going through the relationship between man and God. And uh, today we'll be going through the whiteboard uh, drawing, which is called Eros, E-R-O-S, as well as the whiteboard uh, called Fountain. Um, so it's important to go ahead and look at these whiteboards uh, as a whole, and then we're going to break them down now, look at some uh, tips on how to remember, how to learn, and also teach this, um, this lesson, or these lessons, uh, which is Eros and Fountain. Uh, so first thing you want to do is, is draw an oval, um, either at the top of the sheet that you're working with, if it's a notepad, or on a whiteboard or a chalkboard. Um, and that oval is going to be the Blessed Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is the eternal exchange of love. It's probably important to put in that oval uh, CCC221, which is the Catechism of the Catholic Church, section 221. And I want to go ahead and read that now. But St. John goes even further when he affirms that God is love. God's very being is love. By sending his only Son and the Spirit of love in the fullness of time, God has revealed his innermost secret. God himself is an eternal exchange of love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he has destined us to share in that exchange. So I want to go ahead and, and a, a part I want to focus on here in the Catechism is that, um, but by sending his only Son, the Spirit of love, in the fullness of time, God has revealed his inmost secret. So God has revealed his inmost secret. And he's going to reveal this in two ways. And so right underneath that oval where it says Blessed Trinity, you're going to have um, springs or fountains flowing to the left and to the right. Um, we see that flowing to the left is going to be his revelation, um, which is natural. It's called natural revelation. Revelation just means to, to show uh, that God is showing himself and also his holy will. Um, natural revelation is a way that can be known just because we are man, because we are created. Um, God has created us in, in a sense uh, in the, with the ability to know him. And so this is why we would call this natural revelation. On the right, you have another tier, a fountain or a spring, and that is supernatural revelation. This is something that we cannot know just by being human. Uh, we cannot know just on our own. And so this is also called divine revelation. So there you can put supernatural divine revelation. Um, let's go a little. So, so where we're at now is the Blessed Trinity at the top with that oval. Uh, flowing to the left then is the natural revelation. Flowing to the right then is the supernatural revelation. So the Trinity is beginning to, of course, God revealing himself, but revealing himself in two ways. And we're going to talk about those two ways. Let's talk first about natural revelation. So if we go to that oval, natural revelation, there's going to be two springs coming forth from that. And these are the E and the R of Eros. Um, it's important to note Eros is uh, one of the Greeks, Greek words for love. So God is love. And his innermost secret is um, to, to this desire, this uh, share in that love. And so that's why Eros is used here. The E of the Eros represents experience. This is just the, the human experience. The fact that all humans are created in the image and likeness of God. And it is our experience even just by asking the very question, is there a God? That is a part of the human experience to ask is there something greater and to wonder and have that awe and that wonder and that desire and so that's the e that part of um, natural revelation god is revealing himself in a natural way even through the human condition the human experience um, and then reason reason would be more like our, of course our ability to think but then even the natural law um, so our ability to to think and to act and we'll talk more about that later um, going over to the right where we have supernatural revelation. This is divine revelation. This is more direct. This is God revealing himself. Um, and this is not vague at all. This is, this is very clear. Um, we see that this is done in three ways. So there's going to be three pools um, that these fountains, the, the fountain of um, supernatural revelation are going to flow into. The first pool and I would ask, if you're teaching this question, ask, what, there are three pools, 
what is the first pool? In other words, how does God reveal himself or through what channel, through what means? And the first is Israel. Um, the second, of course, the, the coming from Israel, uh, the fulfillment of all the prophets is Jesus Christ. And so that second pool is Jesus Christ. I like to draw a cross in that, in that, in that uh, circle, that oval, label Jesus Christ. And then also, um, when we're talking about Revelation, we're talking about the truth, the truth of God. St. Thomas Aquinas says, um, truth himself is true or nothing is true. And so there you can put nothing is truer than the word of truth. So when God is revealing his word, we know that Jesus is the word made flesh. Jesus is truth. Truth is not an idea or a philosophy. Truth is a person, the person of Jesus Christ. Um, I like the cross there, and you can see this in the picture. But the cross, then you can draw from the side of the cross of another fountain, the fountain of our Lord's blood and water. That fountain is going to pour into an, the third oval, which is the church. So label that third oval the church. So again, flowing from supernatural divine revelation, we have three ovals going down. The first is Israel, and this is working through the prophets, of course, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. We have Noah, we have Moses, we have David, all of that. But all of that circle, all of that oval is really leading towards Jesus Christ, who is the fulfillment, right? And then Jesus Christ pouring forth, opening his side, pour forth his blood and water to found the church, and the church is the third oval. Flowing from the church in that oval, we have then two springs, and these will be the O and the S of Eros. And so we already have experience and we already have reason. That's through the natural revelation. But now we have the supernatural revelation, which would be the O and the S. And this is oral tradition. Um, this is passed on by the apostles and then the, uh, those who followed the apostles because we're an apostolic church. And then scripture. This is the written teachings of the church, which are contained, of course, in the Bible. Um, we can also look at this another way, and this is now the fountain drawing, uh, the fountain whiteboard. Revel it's really good to just go ahead and, and clear up a, a good definition of revelation. Revelation is simply to uncover. So uh, God ha is veiled, but then he lifts back that veil. Revelation. You can see that word veil in there, revelation. To reveal or to lift back, right? Uncover. This is the, the disclosure by God. So the God is the communicator. In this, in this illustration, you have the communicator and then the receiver. With any type of speech, you have a communicator and the receiver and then the medium, the way that they're communicating. So it's good to stress these, these three things. It is The revelation is the disclosure by God, the communicator, of himself and his will to man. And so going back to the ultimate question of this course, what would it look like to have man without God? Well, God created man, and then God wills to communicate not only himself, not only for man to know himself, but also for man to know his will. So revelation is the disclosure by God of himself and his will to man. Now we know from the Baltimore Catechism, we've probably heard it several times, that we are here on earth to know, love, and serve. And so the fact that he is revealing himself means that we can know him and also um, that we can love him. And then the fact that he's revealing his will means that we can serve that will. Um, okay, so with any of that, it's going to be, okay, what, what is now the, the mediator? How, how is he going to communicate to the receiver man? How is God the communicator going to receive to um, communicate to the receiver who is man? And, and here we go through the intermediator. If he does it through creation, space, time, and the use of creation, space, and time, really this is here is creation, the natural world and natural experience, then that's what we call the E and the R of the Eros, experience and reason. So if he uses experience and reason, then that is natural revelation. And we have three scripture verses for this. It would be good to write these down. Romans 1.20, that's probably the key. 
probably come back to that a lot. It's, it's probably, I would say that's one to put to memorization, Romans one twenty. We have Romans 2.14 and then Acts 17.26. So we're going to go ahead and look at these. Uh, first, Romans 1.20. And I will go ahead, now I'm going to start in uh, Romans one uh, twenty. I'm going to start at 19. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. And here we're really speaking about non-believers, people that um, are not baptized, people that have not received the supernatural revelation here through faith. Um, so here Paul is completely talking about non-believers. For, um, for what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. Ever since the creation of the world, His invisible nature, namely His eternal power and deity, has been clearly perceived in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. Okay, so this is, the, again, that if-then clause. If he's using creation, since the creation of the world, his invisible nature, namely his eternal power and deity, has, deity, has been clearly perceived in the things that, that have been made. So if he's using creation, then that is natural revelation. So what Paul is talking here is that God can be known through natural revelation. Um, so therefore, the, the pagan, the non-believer, is, is, has no excuse, is without excuse. Uh, now let's look at Romans 2.14. When the Gentiles who have not the law do by nature what the law requires, they are all a law to themselves, even though they do not have the law. So here he's talking about two laws. A law that is given basically through supernatural revelation. This would be the Ten Commandments, then of course uh, the laws of Christ, the law of the gospel. But then also there's another law, and that would be the natural law. So here we have the E and the R, the experience and the reason. Um, God revealing himself through creation and through the nature, which is all of course ordered by him. And then we have Acts 17.26. And this is Paul in Athens. Um, and he made from one of every nation, and he made and he made from one every nation of men to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and, and boundaries of their habitation. Sorry, I think I wrote the right one. Okay, sorry. Let me go a little bit further. So this is 22. It'd be good to hear to start on 22. So Paul, standing in the middle of the Aragophis, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by man, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all men life and breath and everything, and he made from one, one every nation of men to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their habitation, that they should seek God in the hope that they might feel after him and find him, Yet he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your poets have said. For we are indeed his offspring. So here God speaks again about that God can be reached towards and grasped at. Um, the difference between, um, you know, it's, it's been said the difference between other religions and Christianity is that other religions, it's man seeking God. But in Christianity, it's God actually seeking man, that God wants man to find him, and so he reveals himself to him. Um, now we're going to go stay on that side um, when we talk about Israel and Jesus and the church. Um, there's quite a few things here that we can look at. Um, first off, if, we, um, if you look at the green box that goes from Israel to the church, we have in the story of Israel, um, Moses' accounts of Genesis, 
uh, we have Adam and Eve, the story of Adam and Eve, and this is when divine revelation opens. So there's two bookends to divine revelation. The Adam and Eve is the beginning, and the death of St. John the Apostle, since he's the last apostle living. So it's important to note that this divine revelation, supernatural revelation, is not continuing. There's not going to be any new revelations, but, but in fact, it opens with Adam and Eve and then closes with St. John the Apostle. So everything that we need to know about God and actually everything we need to know about His holy will can be found within divine revelation. That, of course, is going to be made known to every generation throughout time, and this is the evangelization, um, but the divine revelation has been given. Um, we can also look here at um, Israel has the Old Testament. Uh, this is in the blue Old Testament, 46 books. Uh, to the left, you can label that um, by Israel. And then the New Testament is through the church, the 27 books. And so here we have the, um, the books of the Bible here. Is that that's 73 books of the Bible in total. And then coming from the church, and this is really the operating system of the church, um, is the O and the S, the oral tradition and the S, scripture. And so if God is revealing himself, this is the if, then, if God reveals himself through the Old Testament, the New Testament, and of course his son Jesus, then that is supernatural revelation. So anything that we see that is given in the Old Testament, for instance, the uh, Ten Commandments um, and all the, all the laws of Moses, those things, of course, Jesus and the gospel, and then anything that he's being given by the apostolic church, then, of course, uh, the Catholic Church, then that is all divine revelation. The role, actually, of the church is to safeguard that divine revelation that opened with Adam and Eve and closed with John the Apostle, and to safeguard that divine revelation, that what we would call the deposit of faith, and then to faithfully pass that down to all generations. And that's the role of the church. Um, thank you for joining me for this segment. I hope uh, you have some memorization tips. Uh, please um, take the time to take the quiz at the end of this section and look over that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.